The farmer's craggy face was set in a mask of aesthetic appreciation. His feet were set in a pair of manure-caked boots. Hi, do you speak English? Well, no. Uh, what if I was to say no? An implication of cognizance shrouded in denial. A pretty poser of a paradox indeed. I gave him the look I'd perfected when I was twelve and was going to be the greatest hypnotist of all time. It was a killer. Are you attempting to hypnotize me, or is it the constipation you're suffering? I was a little out of practice. Have you seen Professor Pegram? No, he's packed up and gone. Do you happen to know where? Back in England, I suppose. Do you think Pegram's disappearance is due to the curse? Look at the facts. He dug up the gem. He disappeared. Bingo! It doesn't take a degree in mathematics to work that one out, does it? You don't have to be a smarty Pythagoras with a calculator. I guess not. Pegram has run off with the gem. What can you tell me about the castle? Not much, I'm sorry to say. Most of its history is long forgotten. Ah, but if these old stones could only speak, what stories they'd tell. Stories to make your toes curl and your blood run cold. You know, this castle is said to be over 600 years old. Who built the castle? Mad Feelin', the first lord of Loch Marn. Well, I say lord, but actually he was little more than a village chieftain. He built his castle from the remains of the Templar Preceptory. Where was the site of the Templar Preceptory? Right here, on Temple Hill. Phelan built right on top of the old wall. It's said that deep beneath these walls, there's a Templar chapel. Did Pegram discover the chapel? I don't know. His workers were sworn to secrecy. Do you mind if I climb up your haystack to get into the castle? What? You'd break your stupid neck for sure. Do you think I'd stand by and see your brains dashed out? I'd be very careful, and I promise not to sue. You won't get the chance, not while I'm here to stop you. Good book? A book? It's a passport to a world of fantasy and imagination. Yeah? What's the title? Creative Shelfing for Beginners, the 1978 edition. What's so cool about home improvement? There's nothing like it. The resinous autumnal aroma of seasoned wood, the rhythmic rasp of the plane. Ah, no wonder our lord came to earth as the son of a humble carpenter. I bet he was a wizard with a chisel and a length or two before. Surely the betrayal of Christ's adoptive family as humble artisans is a symbolic metaphor. I don't know about that, but I know they were carpenters. Haven't you read the book? Well, no, but I have seen the greatest story ever told, and I don't recall Jesus putting up any shelves. Did you happen to see a red sports car down on the road? I caught a glimpse of a flash of red on the hill and heard the racket. Sure, it was an awful noise. A sports car, you say? A Ferrari, to be exact. A racing car? And what was it doing here? The poor fella must have been lost. The driver of the Ferrari was involved in an accident. Is that so? Yeah. He knocked somebody down outside the bar. What an idiot! How could a thing like that happen? He was traveling too fast. So fast, he ran right under the car? I mean, the car was traveling too fast. But you'd have thought the idiot could have heard it coming. Maybe you know the guy who was hit by the Ferrari. His name is Sean Fitzgerald. Oh, I know him all right. That's me nephew, the idiot responsible for the stacking of my hay cart. Was he killed by the car? Oh, no. But he has been abducted. Well... That's a relief, no. Aren't you going to look for your nephew? What for? From what you say, it's too late. Well, you could report the matter to the police. Better not. Besides, what could they do? Well, they could mount a search. They have only the one bicycle between them. In a question of superior acceleration, I put me money on the Ferrari. I think you ought to know exactly what Sean has gotten himself into. I'm not sure I want to know. But you're his uncle, his own flesh and blood. You're right, but what can I do? If I'm not here to guard it, some idiot might try to climb the haystack. What a moral dilemma. 
stay here and guard this potentially lethal agricultural construction, or to go off in search of the prodigal nephew, the very man responsible for said hazard? It would need some thinking about. Why, there's no problem. You're right. Why didn't I think of it before? We'll demolish the haystack. You don't have to demolish the haystack to go look for Sean. I'll stay here in your place and warn anyone who's silly enough to climb it. Marvelous! I think I should start me inquiries in the bar. He strode off in the direction of McDevitt's bar, leaving me to contemplate the stack of hay. The stack of hay stopped short of the top of the wall. Even if I stretched as far as I could, the wall was out of reach. What I needed was a slice or two of Alice's Wonderland. I inserted the end of the lifting key in the mortarless crack and gave it a firm shove. It remained lodged in the wall, jutting out to form a step. The rope by which the goat was tethered had become tangled on the old plowshare. There was a pattern of five holes arranged on the wall. They'd been drilled there deliberately. Behind the altar was a carved panel decorated with animals, birds, and plants. It was a statue which had fallen from its place on the wall. Five fingers of stone projected from the back of the carving. The statue was too heavy to lift. It overbalanced into the sand. As I swung the stone upright, I noticed it had left a pattern of holes in the sand. The sack contained a fine white powder. As I dipped my fingers into the soft white powder, I realized what it was. Plaster of Paris. I'd used it in kindergarten to make casts of animal paw prints. I sprinkled the plaster on the sand until the holes were filled. The patch of sand where the statue had fallen was covered with a dense sprinkling of plaster.
Hello. Ah, hello there. Let me introduce you to my pal. We've already met. I want you to know you have my sympathy. Oh, it's just terrible, awful. It's the worst news I heard all day. Let's top the bad news all right for this week and the next. The whole year? It's worse than that. It's the worst disaster in living memory. Isn't it the biggest calamity in the history of the village? I would say it's the biggest in the history of Ireland. The most awesome disaster since mankind paddled out of the primal plop. There's no beer. What about Sean? Why aren't you out looking for him? There's no point in launching an ill-equipped expedition to save the lad. In a life-or-death situation, preparation is essential. That's why I slipped in here. For a point. Is a glass of beer more important than a man's life? Were you talking to me? To all of you. Sean Fitzgerald has met with God knows what, and all you can do is drink. Sean has gone for a ride in a flash car, that's all. Why don't you calm down and join us? I gotta go. Then I noticed a flash of light, something sparkling beneath the open trap door. It was Pegram's gem, all right. A large, uncut blue stone. As I held it aloft, I realized the fascination it could command. I guess I was already under its spell. Did you find it? What? Whatever you was looking for. Uh, yeah. Listen, McGuire, I want you to keep this to yourself. No problem oh. Just chuck us up a crate of lager. No way, you're not old enough. We can sell it and make some cash. Forget it, kid. I couldn't betray Mr. Leary's trust. I could, for sure. That old misery guts deserves it. If you want to do me a favor, keep a lookout for that guy in the suit. Okay, but it'll cost you a pack of the chips. Oh, and shout if you see that Ferrari. It was a couple of paper sacks filled with trash. It was a calendar with a faded photograph of a prize-winning carp. It was a bunch of cleaning materials. It was a rusty faucet. The faucet creaked, coughed, and spewed out a stream of rusty colored water. I held the towel under the faucet and soaked it with water. I shut off the faucet as tight as I could, but it kept on dripping. 